In front of you is a jar of mayonnaise. Smooth, creamy, and rich with a gel tang, it's a familiar condiment that brings life to sandwiches, salads, dips, and sauces. Out of a few simple ingredients, eggs, oil, vinegar, transform into the luscious, shelf-stable product we use every day. Start the journey of mayonnaise begins not in the factory, but on the farm with eggs, the heart of the recipe. Specifically, egg yolks. They are essential because of their natural emulsifying properties, which allow oil and water-based ingredients to combine into a smooth, stable mixture. To ensure a consistent supply of fresh, high-quality yolks, some factories partner with specialized poultry farms. For example, a one-acre facility housing nearly 20,000 hens can produce up to 18,000 eggs a day. Egg-laying peaks around dawn. Within hours, the freshly laid eggs are collected by a conveyor belt system that transports them gently to a sorting area. Here, high-tech vacuum suction technology lifts and places them into molded trays, each holding approximately 150 eggs. These trays are then stacked and carred directly to the production facility for processing. Dot once inside the factory, the eggs undergo a thorough washing process that removes dirt and surface debris. Next, they pass through an ultraviolet UV light tunnel that kills bacteria without the use of chemicals. Afterward, a blast of high-powered air dries them completely. Dry eggs are critical for maintaining hygiene during the next stage, candling. This technique involves passing each egg over a bright light to inspect its internal contents. Once sorted, the eggs proceed to the separation phase. Mayonnaise production requires only the yolks. Specialized egg separating machines crack each egg and divide the yolk from the white with remarkable precision. The yolks are collected in stainless steel containers and kept at a controlled temperature. To preserve their consistency and microbial stability. Now, the next critical ingredient, oil. Most industrial mayonnaise recipes use refined soybean or canola oil for their neutral flavor and stability. The oil is stored in massive tanks and filtered for impurities before being pumped into the mixing system. The art of mayonnaise lies in emulsification combining oil and water-based ingredients into a single creamy blend. This, as the oil emulsifies into the yolk, the mixture begins to thicken and lighten in color transforming from a yellowish liquid into the pale. Creamy mayonnaise, we recognize that once the base emulsion is established, it's time to add flavor. Depending on the brand or recipe, spices such as mustard powder, garlic, sugar, salt, or even paprika may be added to enhance the flavor profile. It involves gently heating the sauce to destroy any remaining harmful microorganisms without altering its taste or texture. Sterile, high-speed machines fill thousands of jars, squeeze bottles, or tubs per hour. Each container is automatically weighed, sealed with a vacuum-tight lid, and labeled with batch information and expiration dates. But before these jars head to supermarkets and kitchens, quality assurance teams step in. Samples from each batch are tested in labs for pH level, microbial safety, viscosity, and flavor. Once approved, the products are packed into boxes and loaded onto refrigerated trucks for distribution. So the next time you open a jar of mayonnaise, spread it onto a sandwich or mix it into a potato salad, take a moment to appreciate the incredible process behind it. Out in the apple orchards, it's harvest time. Forget those sad store-bought caramel apples seriously. Who buys those? It all starts in the apple. Orchards, where the trees are full of ripe, crisp apples just begging to be picked. But forget ladders and baskets. This isn't a nostalgic hand-picking operation. Welcome to the world of the mechanical tree shaker. Yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. This powerful machine clamps onto the trunk of an apple tree and gives it a quick, controlled shake. In just seconds, Apples rain down like a fruit storm, 
thudding against the ground in perfect rhythm thud, thud, thud. These bins are then transported to the processing factories where the transformation from orchard fruit to caramel delicacy begins. The first step, a thorough water dunking. The apples are submerged to loosen any dirt, dust, or remaining debris clinging to the skin. But that's only the start of their cleansing ritual. They then roll along conveyor belts, passing through soft, rotating bristle brushes. These brushes aren't just for cleaning. They serve an important technical purpose. They strip off the apple's natural wax coating. But in the world of caramel apples, that wax is the enemy. Caramel doesn't adhere well to waxed surfaces. It slides off, bubbles, or creates weird patches. Dot next up, the sticks. You've probably never given much thought to the wooden sticks that magically appear centered inside every caramel apple. Those are gently rotated, stem side up, and lined up in perfect unison. Now we're getting to the good part, the caramel bath. Thick, velvety, and golden brown, Caramel is the real hero of this story. Made from a luscious blend of sugar, butter, and cream cooked slowly until it reaches just the right consistency. It's a balancing act between chewiness and silkiness, richness and sweetness. And then, the dip. The apples, now stick mounted and ready, descend one by one into the warm caramel. As they make contact, the surface ripples and the caramel begins to coat, clinging and stretching before wrapping itself around the apple like a thick, glossy jacket. It's one of the most satisfying sights in any candy factory. The temperature of the caramel is carefully monitored. Too hot and it runs off. Too cold and it hardens before a full coat. Precision is everything. Straight out of the caramel bath, the apples are rolled sometimes manually sometimes mechanically into a variety of toppings. The classic is, of course, crushed roasted peanuts. But there are dozens of options. Rainbow sprinkles, coconut, flakes, chocolate chips, cookie crumbles, crushed pretzels, and even sea salt flakes for a gourmet twist. For the little ones, factories often coat the caramel with mini marshmallows, Smarties or gummy candies, turning each apple into a colorful, Candy-covered surprise dot now comes a part you probably never noticed, but is crucial. The packaging. Every. Caramel apple is placed inside a clear plastic shell, perfectly molded to resemble the shape of an apple. Dot once wrapped, the apples are labeled, boxed, and chilled until they're ready to ship. And that's when they head out to your local supermarket, candy shop, or school fundraiser, perfectly preserved and looking like edible works of art. Urge to bite into something sweet, sticky, and absolutely unforgettable. Each Snickers bar contains 27 grams of sugar, nearly as much as it can 4.5 grams of saturated fat. Snickers was introduced in 1930, founder of Mars Inc., who sought to create a candy that combined the rich creaminess of peanut butter, the crunch of whole peanuts, and the distinct sweetness of caramel and chocolate. With a base of fluffy nougat, flavored with peanut butter and malted milk, a layer of golden caramel and roasted Virginia peanuts, all coated in smooth milk chocolate, Snickers quickly found its way into the hearts of candy lovers. It all begins with high-quality cocoa beans. Each day, nearly 100 tons of beans are roasted at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes to deepen their flavor. As they roast, the beans expand, releasing their oils and intensifying the chocolate's aroma. After roasting, the beans are shelled to extract the cocoa nibs, the edible part that carries the chocolate essence. These nibs are ground into a thick liquid called chocolate liquor. The liquor is then mixed with sugar and milk powder, blended in giant mixers and transferred to a conking machine where it's further refined for texture and taste. The final step in the chocolate preparation is tempering, a precise process of heating and cooling to ensure the chocolate is smooth. As the peanuts roast, caramel is prepared in large vacuum kettles using a mixture of corn syrup, butter, condensed milk, sugar, and salt. 
cooked at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. This golden caramel achieves a chewy consistency that blends perfectly. Next comes the nougat, the soft, sweet base of every Snickers bar. Made from corn syrup, sugar, water, and egg whites. It's cooked at 250 degrees Fahrenheit before being whipped into a fluffy texture. Peanut butter is then added to give the nougat its distinct flavor. After roasting, the peanuts are ground into smooth peanut butter and mixed with sugar and salt. Meanwhile, after conking and tempering, the chocolate is ready for coating dot, then made with a slightly different ratio of corn syrup, butter, and sugar, cooked at 120 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes, resulting in a smoother melt-in-your-mouth texture. Once the nougat and caramel are layered and cooled, the bars are cut and coated in a dense milk chocolate layer, about 50 grams per bar. They then travel through a 15-meter cooling tunnel where the temperature drops from 30 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius in just 5 minutes. This process helps the chocolate set without cracking. Finally, the bars are sealed in their signature wrappers and prepared for distribution. While each candy differs in flavor, whether you prefer the crunchy caramel and peanuts of Snickers. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates. Share your thoughts in the comment section down below.